Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I hope you're doing well and you're getting ready for a, a great weekend. Guys, I've got some very big news to share with you. First up is a wealth manager called Wealthfront, which has $25 billion of assets under management. They are going to be offering their clients exposure to crypto via Grayscale. We also have State Street, very well known in the Wall Street circles. They're going to be offering crypto services to their clients, and they just made a huge investment in Luca, and I'll be interviewing the CEO of Luca soon. In addition, a German bank with the new uh, laws, crypto-friendly laws coming up in Germany, they're going to be offering their clients Bitcoin and crypto investments. So we have a lot to go through. We have so a lot of uh, Bitcoin mining news as well, where uh, people can mine tax-free Lots of bullish news, guys, just the infrastructure being set up. So we're going to go through it. Before I get to it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel, and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, which allows you to buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies at low fees. And guess what? You can also stake, and you don't have to pay any fees. Other exchanges charge you. Okay, coin does not. So sign up, link in the description. Also, please be sure to sign up for my free weekly newsletter, link in the description. Um, guys, I will be interviewing Congressman Tom Emmer next week. This gentleman is, of course, pro crypto. He put out the Securities Clarity Act and a whole bunch of other things. Remember, he said XRP is not a security. So he understands what's happening here. And I'm, we're going to hear directly from him. And like I said, I'll be interviewing the CEO of Luca, which of course just got an investment and a partnership with uh, State Street, but also they are powering the S&P Dow Jones crypto indices. So you don't want to miss that interview. I'm also trying to get an interview with Arthur Brito, who's the co-founder of Ripple Labs. And uh, he's been very low key, but I'm trying to get him. It won't be a video interview, it'll be an audio so more to come on that. Make sure you got the notification bell enabled. Guys, let's take a look at the market here. Bitcoin looking very bullish, very, very bullish. It is up 1% from a 24-hour perspective, up 24% from a seven-day perspective. And we see some green across the board here. And take a look at the uh, daily chart for Bitcoin. Nine green candles uh, closing for nine oh, over nine days, guys. I like it. I like what I'm seeing here, very bullish. If we look at the weekly chart, we see the breakout upwards. I think this is what we've been waiting for, right? I've been talking to you guys about it for the past month and a half. We, we need to see that uptrend and the breakout, um, and then we will continue to move upwards. It's not going to be, uh, the bull run won't start right away, but I think we're going to build some support levels, and then you're going to see a takeoff to $100,000 plus, in my opinion. Could I be wrong? Sure, but I think there's a high probability of uh, us going over six figures and certainly another bull run in this bull market. So looking really great here and check it out. I'm not making that up or, you know, based on my feelings, but rather the trends, what has taken place in the past year. So here, plan B treated out the following updated chart showing uh, here in the red is our respective cycle that we're in. And you see here, the uh, we're breaking outwards. Uh, upwards, excuse me, similar to 2013 when we doubled peak, one peak and then another, right? Uh, you had the blow off top at the second peak, of course. So we had our first peak, we had our correction, and then we're going for another peak, my friends. So uh, it's looking very bullish and not only the technical analysis and macro level charts and trends, but what the institutional investors are doing. Check this out. Robo Advisor Wealthfront offers grayscale investments in Bitcoin and Ethereum. The Palo Alto, California-based firm was uh, ex oh, excuse me has expanded its roster of investment vehicles to include the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and Grayscale Ethereum Trust. You know when I stated many times, guys, of why a Bitcoin ETF is so important. This is an example. It will, it will allow a lot of these uh, big institutional players who look at this point, because we don't have full regulatory clarity in the United States, it's risky for them to hold Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptos directly. But if they can go through a trust or an ETF, it will bring in so much capital. And this is why I'm, I'm so eager to have a Bitcoin ETF. And maybe we, we get it this year. I think there's a high chance. And that is the catalyst that takes Bitcoin over $100,000. 
So I hope you understand the importance of a Bitcoin ETF and why a lot of these companies are going through grayscale versus holding Bitcoin and Ethereum directly. The lack of regulatory clarity. If they go to go through a trust, they're more protected. Likewise with an ETF. So um, the move marks the first by a major robo advisor in the U.S. to offer clients crypto exposure. An announcement by Wealthfront Friday claimed clients will be able to allocate up to 10% of their total portfolio to the two trusts with the crypto's volatility cited as the reason for restriction. The Wealthfront is among the largest robo-advisory uh, platforms in the world with $25 billion in assets under management. Guys, all these big whales and institutions and investment firms and hedge funds are getting in. It started with Paul Tudor Jones last year when he said, Bitcoin and crypto is the fastest horse in the race. And he put out his letter and why he's taking a position. And then we saw the dominoes started to fall off after that. Now, check this out. If you want more bullish news, State Street to launch crypto services for private cl uh, fund clients. Uh, after leading Luca's Series C funding around round in the late 2020, State Street partners with the firm to offer new digital asset services. So I'm certainly going to talk about this in my interview with Luca's CEO, uh, but let me give you some more details. Major American financial services and bank holding company, State Street Corporation, is expanding its push into the cryptocurrency industry by launching new digital asset services. State Street, the second oldest operating bank in the United States, announced Thursday that it would provide digital and crypto asset administration services for the company's private fund funds clients. The bank will enable its private fund clients to access a set of institutional grade middle and back office offerings that support diversified portfolios, including crypto related features like collection, standardization, reporting, processing, and reconciliation. If this right here doesn't tell you what is coming, guys, and the prices we are going to see, uh, I don't know what will. If you're still on the fence and you don't realize what's happening, you have some of the oldest institutions. This is the second um, oldest operating bank in the United States. They are going all in. And likewise, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan. We obviously the JP Morgan news some a, a week and a half ago. They're going off. They're offering crypto uh, trading services and investment services to their clients. Guys, this is bullish. Um, to unlock the services, State Street signed an agreement with Luca, a U.S.-based blockchain data and software provider focused on reporting audit-ready data on cryptocurrency transactions. State Street is known as a major investor in Luca, leading the company's Series C funding round in December 2020. So bullish, guys, so bullish. Um, and I'm excited to see uh, more dominoes fall, as I always talk to you guys about game theory, right? You have one of these guys, the guys do it, and then you're going to see the competitors fall in line. Now, check this out. One of Germany's largest asset managers, Deca Bank, is considered considering investing in Bitcoin after a new law takes effect Monday, Bloomberg reports. It holds $403 billion in assets under management. One after the other, the dominoes are falling, guys, and it's happening globally. It, it started happening in Wall Street in the United States here and now globally. And that's why I, I always say this asset class is going to be the greatest ever. It is borderless. It's on the blockchain. It doesn't matter if you're a whale or you're a guppy, right? You're just the average Joe with maybe a thousand bucks and you put into Bitcoin. You're a part of the asset class and you can be in any country on any continent. As long as you have internet access, you can participate. There's never been anything like this before, guys. Um, and let me give you some more details. So um, obviously we talked about the German law on this channel a couple of weeks ago, and it's going to be taking effect on Monday, and it would make it possible for special funds, if that's how you pronounce it, to invest up to 20% of holdings in Bitcoin. In Germany, special funds are mainly used for investments by institutions such as pension companies and insurers. Under the new legislation, Deca Bank would become just one of about 4,000 German firms eligible to buy Bitcoin, 
And of course, it starts with Bitcoin. That's the doorway. And then it will go to crypto, my friends. I hope once again, you see what is happening. And this is resonating. This, these are facts. This is not my dreams or my fantasy here or you know, I'm giving my opinion. Look what is happening right before our eyes. And I, I always say, you know, pat yourself on the back that you're here early. You're on the side of smart money. Smart money is entering in. Noobs and rookies are scared. You have uh, stupid politicians and fudsters talking all kinds of stuff about crypto. I don't care. I'm looking at what the banks and the institutions, the people who run the country and pay to give the campaign donations to the politicians and regulators, what they're doing. I, I know there's a lot packed in that, but if you understand how politics works, that's what's coming, my friends. Um, and check this out. I think this is bullish. U U.S. Compass mining clients can now mine Bitcoin directly into an IRA without triggering a taxable event. I like this. I'm going to have to uh, look into this. Um, but this is so bullish. They, they can do this. It opens up so many avenues for people concerned about taxes. So under the current tax laws, revenue from Bitcoin mining is taxed as income. Currently, Miners also, oh, excuse me, must also pay capital gains tax when they are forced to sell some of their Bitcoin and cover the tax obligations. Through mining in a choice account, miners avoid taxes on their Bitcoin revenue in the short term and potentially indefinitely, depending on which type of IRA they use. In a statement sent to uh, Bitcoin Magazine, Compass explained tax efficient mining presents enormous benefits to retail miners and empowers them with another tool to mine even more profitably at a smaller scale. I like this guys. And I, you know, they mentioned Kingdom Trust here and I had interviewed one of the guys from Kingdom Trust last year. Um, this is a big infrastructure item, a big on and off ramp, right? Because you can avoid taxes. Uh, and I think, you know, as far as investing, I, you know, there's companies like I Trust Capital and so forth out there. So I think this is a big one and it's going to be so crucial for the growth of this asset class. Um, check this out. Green, excuse me, Greenage Generation will use Bitcoin mining profits to build solar farm. According to the mining farm, it aims to create high tech jobs for residents and support local businesses with the solar farm. So why am I sharing with this with you? Goes back to what I've been talking about. There's a Bitcoin mining boom in addition to a market cleanup. Well, what was what did it start with? Tether. Then it went to Bitcoin mining that um, it had to move out of China, right? The majority of the hash rate was controlled there. That problem is being solved. And then moving to renewable energy with the ESG concerns and so forth. All of these things are being solved. And why? Why is this happening? Because the big money is here. The government's here. Politicians here. They're not going to allow these things. It can't be the wild, wild west anymore. The market's going to go to another plateau uh, and, the, and the industry is going to go to another plateau and it's going to be cleaned up and ready for mass adoption. So uh, you're seeing a lot of these miners are now moving away from coal and dirty energy, if you want to call it that, and going to renewable. Um, now, through a recent bill, a bipartisan infrastructure bill, they tried to sneak, uh, the government officials tried to sneak, sneak in a... Uh, uh, a tax on crypto and so on and so forth. But here's an update. Crypto lobby groups say they're fighting unworkable crypto reporting language in infrastructure bill. Two things. Uh, government still, still have some people who are trying to, I don't know, stop crypto or trying to, whatever they're trying to do, but there's people uneducated about it. Um, and two, it's great to see that the, these different crypto lobbying groups are working Washington, D.C., like I just stated before, money and politics, right? Campaign donations. You got to go out there. You got to talk to them. And, and this is, um, you know, the Blockchain Association. They're trying to talk to these people like, you got to stop this nonsense, right? Uh, they, they're going to kill the market, the industry, when, when around the world people are um, allowing this industry to grow. So great. It's positive. It's, it's stupid that, you know, with the bill that they tried to sneak this into the infrastructure spending bill from Biden, but uh, great to see crypto lobbying firms are working. Now, finally, check this out. Uh, just some perspective, because some of you may not have been around in the dot-com boom. The internet is doomed to fail over unfulfilled promises, 1996. Now, bring that to 2020, 2021, right? 
uh, you see the similar types of FUD. And guess what? They're not going to stop the technology, but there's going to be your naysayers, your contrarians. But the, uh, the fact is, this is where we're going to. The digital token economy, crypto is here to stay, blockchain is here to stay. And there was, to give you, once again, the context, the juxtaposition, there was FUD back in the 90s and early 2000s, especially when the dot-com boom, uh, dot-com stocks crash. Oh man, was there a lot of FUD. But if you held through, you held your Googles, your Amazons, your Ebays, and you went to your Facebooks and so forth, you did well. So I hope that's a lesson and you see what's happening. You look at things macro level, not in the short term, right? Ignore the FUD and be patient. Guys, big things are ahead. I, I think we're seeing some upward moves, movements here with the market. And uh, I hope uh, you're as bullish as I am because I see what's on the horizon with all these banks and institutions coming in. So guys, what do you think about this news? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I will talk to you all later.